Uh, science! So, D-Man, the last, I don't know, couple months we've been talking about a lot of different spacecraft. Because yeah. Because there's just always news from these things that are working really hard out on different planets and orbiting asteroids and everything else. Yeah, and it's pretty amazing what they've been able to do. I think across the board we've seen them perform above and beyond oh what we God. actually even sent them out to do. Yeah. If only we can get humans to do that. I know, right? <laughs> oh, or maybe just cars or something. <laughs> yeah, something. Something to perform like these satellites are performing because we're just getting some really amazing stuff. Yeah. And by that I mean, uh, well, let's start out with Juno. Yes. Juno, we've talked about so many times has been flying around Jupiter getting some really cool stuff and uh, well this is just one more thing to add on the to the pile of cool stuff uh, Juno has found a new giant storm on Jupiter and has been named Oval BA this massive storm is approximately 5,000 miles across and about half the size of the famous red spot um, it reached its current size when these three smaller spots collided and merged in the year 2000. So we saw three smaller storms just crash into each other and turn into one big giant storm. And Juno caught this. It's yeah. very cool. Yeah, it's really neat. The Great Red Spot may have formed from the same process centuries ago. So we can actually probably look at this, gather data, and see maybe possibly an origin story of this red spot. Ever since we've discovered Jupiter, that red spot is like the most famous part about Jupiter, yeah. other than Jupiter being the largest planet in our solar system. But we never really understood what it is or why it is. I mean, just the thought that there is a storm so massive, so massive. on the most massive planet. And it's so massive that you could see it from far, far, far. Yeah. Away. You can look through a telescope and see this storm. Yeah. It's just completely incredible. Yeah. And it's obvious that these storms kind of just happen all the time on Jupiter, and this is another one. Anyways, Juno took these images on December 1st, 2018, and was between 15,000 and 60,000 miles above the planet, so we got it's a little really close. close. Yeah, yeah. it's very cool. Um, Juno uh, has been now orbiting the planet for uh, a couple years now, and um, it's really awesome because Juno, remember when we were talking about Cassini? Yes. Cassini was um, orbiting Saturn, and it was meant to orbit Saturn, but not really meant to get as close as we made it get near the end of its mission. Right. But it outperformed itself. We never thought it was going to do that. Juno, on the other hand, we made sure we're like, we want this thing to get as close as possible. Yeah. And it's going to get closer and closer and closer. And eventually, someday, it will go into Jupiter. Yeah. And it's and built I, for that. I can't imagine what we're going to find when we when we do that. Oh, I incredible. mean, there's so much we don't know about yeah. Jupiter. And that's why Juno's out there finding this awesome shit. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love being able to check in with stuff like this. Another... Um, spacecraft, actually a rover that we've talked about a lot on this show, is Curiosity. Curiosity is one of the rovers on Mars, actually landed in 2012. Um, planetary researchers know a lot about a planet by measuring what's beneath the surface of a particular location. And uh, they can calculate the density, the underlying material, that kind of stuff. So typically, to measure gravity on Mars or other planets, scientists rely on orbiting satellites to do that. But the data is very limited because they're not on the surface. Right. You know, like you can get a little bit, but it's not as much. So John Hopkins University... Um, Dr. Kevin Lewis and co-authors decided to try calibrating the accelerometers on NASA's Curiosity rover to measure surface gravity. So let me just put this into perspective. This rover has been giving us data for the last six years roving around on Mars, and we never meant for it to do this. Yet back on Earth, they're like, maybe we can take these things and recalibrate them to give us better data on this other thing that we never built this thing for. It's crazy. I, it makes me wonder if they even thought that this was a possibility when they sent Curiosity out. Oh, yeah. Like maybe maybe in the back of their brain, they were like, we can use these for other things. Maybe. But yeah, I bet there's a whole science team dedicated for thinking of creative ways to use these instruments that we weren't even thinking of to begin with. I bet. Oh, I, I would almost put money on that. So Dr. Lewis said Curiosity a 
essentially has a new science instrument six and a half years into it into its mission. This allows us to get new information about the subsurface of Mars in ways the rover was never designed to do. Now, Curiosity is in the Gale Crater, which is this large crater that we're not really sure how it exi- how it came to be. Was it an asteroid that hit it? Was it a lake at one time and now it's dried up? You know, like, was, is it, you know, is it tectonic? We, we're, we're, we're still learning about that. And Curiosity is ascending this mountain um, kind of near the, the bottom right-hand corner of this crater called Mount Sharp. And uh, now with this new these new um, processes that it can do, it's measuring the gravity as it ascends this mountain. Oh, interesting. Which is, which is interesting. Uh, now, we believe that maybe this, the central peaks of this, you know, were created by a shock impact, and that would kind of, that would kind of be why there's this height, this mountain inside this crater. Um, but the upper layers of this mound appear to be made of uh, wide scoured se- sediments that are much more easily eroded, which means that it might have been not a big of an impact. It might have actually just existed. It might have been a mountain. Oh, crazy. And maybe, you know, maybe there's, there's, there's other things involved. These new findings suggest that Mount Sharp's lower layers have been compacted only by a half a mile. Um, and this gives us a hell of a lot more questions because as it's going up and checking out these layers, we're thinking the gravitational pull is going to get less. Just like if we were on Earth and you ascend Mount Everest, you know, gravity is a little bit less as you're going yeah. up. It's going down, but not at the rate that we thought. Oh, weird. It's weird, and scientists are kind of, you know, it's— Curiosity is living up to its name yeah. because it's definitely giving us a lot more curiosity. Um, Dr. Ashwin Vasavada, the project scientist on NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory on Curiosity, said there are still many questions about how Mount Sharp developed, but our study adds an important piece to the puzzle. I'm thrilled that the creative scientists and engineers are still finding innovative ways to make new scientific discoveries with the rover. This is a testament to the utility of having a diverse set of techniques with the Curiosity rover, and we're excited to see what the upper layers of Mount Sharp have in store. So this is news that's happening right now on Mars. Like, literally, Curiosity's climbing this mountain, and we're getting this data back in real time. That's so And crazy. they're just, they're figuring this shit out. Yeah, usually it takes years to get this stuff back, yeah. and then we're pouring over ones and zeros until we get the actual data. Yeah, and we're getting we're getting it right from there, which so crazy. is really really cool. Um, finally, I wanted to bring up a, uh, our, the third spacecraft to, to that we're going to talk about is the Parker Solar Probe. We launched this last year on its way to the sun. Uh, my name is on this this uh, this spacecraft. Actually, I, I it says jerk face on it. <laughs> it does. It says jerk face right on the side <laughs> of it. Um, no, they they were uh, like uh, you were able to submit your name and they put it on like a little drive and it's in there. So like oh weird like, yeah. So I hope it, aliens find it and they're like these are the first people we're going to destroy. Me too. I kind of hope that. <laughs> um, but it made its first orbit around the sun on January 19th of this year. And um, Dr. Andy Dreisman, the, pro- the Parker Solar Probe Project Manager, said it's been an illuminating and fascinating first um, first orbit. The data we have received hints at many new things that we've not seen before and at potential new discoveries. This This probe is delivering on the mission's promise of revealing the mysteries of our sun. That's really cool. And I have a picture here um, that is a detailed look at the Corona stream. And that bright dot in little off center from this, that's the planet Mercury. Whoa. So we're seeing the sun super duper up close. Um, this is a, the, 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 the Parker Solar Probe now has begun its second orbit. And it's going to make 24 planned orbits um, as it as it like basically carries out its mission. Um, its closest approach will be on the second orbit, and that's going to happen around April 4th of this year. So we'll definitely be talking about this again. The four instrument suites will help scientists begin to answer 
a ton of questions about the sun's fundamental physics, including how particles and solar material are accelerated out into space at such high speeds, like when we see like these jets of just energy coming off of the sun. Like, yeah. what the hell is that? Yeah. And why the sun's atmosphere, this corona, is so much hotter than the actual surface of the star. Like, we know next to nothing about stars. And thankfully, we have one in our backyard. Yeah. And this is the <laughs> first time we've actually ever sent a probe this close to one because we never really had the technology to shield it from its its radiation. Yeah, basically. yeah, that's intense. So it's really, in it is, it's very intense and really cool. Um, I love doing this science segment. I say it all the time because we get to check in with stuff that we talk about, you know, and we learn new data and new things. Oh, yeah. And these are all names you're going to hear as we progress with the show and they progress with discoveries with with these tools that they're using out in space. It's it's pretty awesome. It is really awesome. And uh, I just want to leave you guys one last time, too, to, to let you know if you're just listening to this on our mini episode of science on the podcast, you can go on over to the Fueled by Deathcast Facebook page and all of these photos that we've been talking about will be right on that page so you can see them as we're talking about them.